Brad was uh, born with complex congenital heart disease. Uh, he had both um, holes in his heart connecting the right and the left side, which and also abnormal valves in his heart, and had had um, multiple prior cardiac surgeries. All of his care had previously been over a children's hospital, and finally uh, transitioned his care over to the Brigham and Women's Hospital, uh, an adult center, for consideration of really advanced therapies um, beyond uh, optimal medical and device therapy for his uh, really advanced heart failure. The option of a ventricular assist device, a mechanical pump or pumps to bridge him or get him to transplant were really not an option in his case because of all the prior uh, surgeries that he had had. And so we were really focused on his candidacy for uh, heart transplant and whether we could move ahead successfully with uh, really ultimate treatment for his congenital heart disease, which was to give him a new heart. He had um, a number of other uh, conditions that were complicating his care at that time. His uh, kidney function was not good. His liver function was not good. Uh, his nutritional status was quite poor at that time. And our evaluation is not just a medical evaluation. It involves uh, a social worker, a psychiatrist, a nutritionist, physical therapist. Um, we have a large multidisciplinary team that's involved in the evaluation. Once that evaluation is complete, uh, we meet on a weekly basis uh, as a large group to discuss uh, all of our cases, including Brad's, and um, uh, the consensus uh, was to move ahead to list him for transplant. The next uh, struggle was actually getting him there. Uh, in fact, at one point, he developed uh, a pretty significant infection in his bloodstream related to uh, a catheter that was being used to monitor his heart function. And uh, actually, for a while, we had to take him off uh, or inactivate him uh, from, the, from the heart transplant waiting list while we treated the infection. Brad had a uh, very uh, uh, sort of an extended and very supportive uh, uh, family system. But at the center, that was really uh, his wife, Mandy. And uh, as part of our daily rounds, we would often spend time with uh, both Brad and Mandy, as well as other family members or friends who, who were in. And, to update them on how things were going, um, the progresses, progress we were making, but also problems that we would run into and ways we were going to try to um, uh, solve those problems to get uh, him ultimately to where, to where we needed to get. He uh, had a very difficult recovery from surgery, probably one of the, um, the most difficult uh, recoveries that I've seen in, in, in many, many years. And, if you met Brad now, uh, you would be you would be amazed. You wouldn't if you had been someone that took care of him in the hospital. You, you really probably wouldn't recognize him now. Brigham and Women's Hospital is focused on uh, cardiovascular care for a long time. It's not until you actually travel other places and talk to colleagues at other institutions where you realize how lucky you are uh, to work uh, at a place like Shapiro uh, with the resources that we have available and the outcomes that we can achieve in patients um, because of those resources. The Advanced Heart Disease Program is involved in um, several uh, major uh, research initiatives. Uh, we are one of the uh, eight uh, members of a clinical research network that's funded through the NIH and the National Heart Lung Blood Institute. We are also uh, continue to be a leader in the area of um, ventricular assist device therapy, um, both as in terms of its clinical use and also um, uh, studying uh, the use of these uh, pumps, both the older pumps and the newer pumps, in patients with um, really uh, advanced heart disease. Brigham and Women's Hospital has really been a leader in the, in the area of uh, cardiac transplant now for coming up on three decades, actually. We have transplanted uh, well over 550 patients. Um, we're currently following about 300 patients who are living with cardiac transplants, including even patients that we transplanted back in the mid-1980s. And I think um, as a center, um, not only have we been a leader in terms of uh, uh, length of time and, and volume in transplants in the region, but uh, I think we, mostly we pride ourselves on, on the outcomes.